Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at some of the functions that the Wii Remote can do. And we're basically just going to look at button presses in the initial stages. Now the Wii Remote has quite a few buttons that we can mess with. We have the 1 and 2 button, as long as the minus plus the home button, the A button, the B button, which is the trigger at the back, and then the D-pad. Then we also have the nunchuck um, that we can use. And then, of course, the classic controller. And all these different controllers and button presses can be accessed using GlovePie. So I'm now going to show you how to create a basic script. Let's say you want to assign two buttons on the Wii Remote to operate two keyboard buttons. Now, what you need to understand first is that a button has got two states. It's either pressed or it's not pressed. And we represent this in a variable called a boolean. Now this is actually not that complicated, all it is is a boolean has, a, has also only got two states, it's either true or it's false. So what we do, what we say is when a button is pressed we set it to true, when a button is not pressed it's set to false and that's all there is to it, that's as complicated as it gets. So for example, there are no buttons pressed at the moment on the keyboard, so all the buttons are set to false, but I could go something like this. So I'm in here, I'm in GlovePie script, I could go keyboard dot A, which is just the A button, and then I could go equals true. So I've set the A button to true, and I'm going to now test this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up under, let me think if I can remember where it is, for a while since I use this. You just look through and you'll find that there's actually quite a, there's a few nice tools in here. Ah, here we are, remote test, and this brig brings just up a nice form that we can use, it's just a standard memo, and I'm going to run it. And you'll see that nothing will actually happen, and you'll be thinking, why A is supposed to be pressed? Well, very basically, A is currently down, but it's set that it only registers it once as a key when you're in any text form. So I've just pressed A there, you see. But if I hold A down, it's a bit different. But when you're actually bypassing the keyboard and setting A to true, um, although A is currently being pressed, Windows kind of knows when it's in a text box and it only ever does the A one press of the key with the A button. So it's just one of those things that you get used to. Your macro is working properly. And I'm going to prove this by setting it to keyboard.b. So basically, this means whatever key the current state of keyboard.b is, A will also be that state. So if I press the B button on the keyboard, the A button will be pressed also. And I'm going to run this code. And if I press B, you'll see A comes out as well. If I hold B down, you'll see that there's a row of Bs and only one A. And that's because, as I've explained before, Whenever it comes to a text area like so, although A is being held down, it ignores it and only uses it as one instance. And that's really all there is to knowing about using this debug, debug form. And it's just one of those things I thought I really should tell you because you might be, as I've said, you might be thinking your scripts aren't working properly. But they are, so that's really good, isn't it? So, let's just now stop this script and let's look at some of the actual functions we can use in the Wii Remote. Now there are many different buttons as I've already expressed. Now I've currently got my first Wii Remote connected. If you've only connected one Wii Remote then that's fine because you've only ever got one Wii Remote connected anyway. So what we're going to do is we're going to go on Wii, just type in Wii Remote and then we put a number. This can be represented from 1 to 4, representing 4 different Wii Remotes. So I'm going to go Wii Remote 1 dot, and then this big list of buttons we can use and other actual variables we can use are available to us. Now we've got the battery, we've got channel, we've got absolutely loads of them. Now I'm not going to go over all of these by any means because there's quite a lot and some are, are just accessing raw data. Um, and in, in all their bits and everything, so we're going to leave that alone. We're just going to go over in the, the first few tutorials just buttons. Later on we'll look at using rotation axes and actually incorporating those two fake joypads so we can actually have an analog control in our games and have all that emulated. But as I said, we're currently just going to use buttons. So I'm going to use the, let's say, the Wii Remote.a button. 
like so. I'm going to set that to the keyboard dot a button. So we have keyboard dot a equals Wii remote dot a. So if I run the script, load up, of course, the remote tester. I'm just going to delete the text. So I'm going to press A. And if I press A, you see, if I hold it down, nothing happens. If I keep pressing it, A just keeps getting pressed. However, if you like wrote a script for a game that you'd made and held A down, the game would recognize that A was being held down. So it's just, as I said, only in text that this doesn't work. So now that we've got that sorted out, let's create something else that we can do with this. So we've got all as A's. I'm just going to stop the script. I'm going to go keyboard dot, let's say B, no, backspace, backslash, no, space, is going to set be set to Wii mode one dot B, and then I'm going to set the directional keys up to the directional keys on the Wii remote. So keyboard dot up, which is the up arrow on the keyboard, is going to be set to Wii mote one dot up dead simple and then keyboard dot down is going to set to Wii mote one dot down and so forth and so on so I've got to do the same for both the left and of course the um, right so it's a bit tedious this but anyway just like so so now I'm going to rerun this script again. So if I press left, oh that's it, look I'm going left through, as you can see the cursor moving, if I press right on the Wii remote I go right, up will go up a line, down will go down a line, backspace, uh, sorry the, the trigger button on the Wii remote deletes text. So I can delete like so, quite nicely. And I can keep on going through this as much as I want. And you can just see we've got a nice algorithm here to add text and delete text. That's basically just using a Wii remote. And that's fully emulated by the Wii remote. And this piece of software, GlovePi, is converting that into a basic macro. So you can see how simple that is. So let's, let's say we wanted to create a basic game. And we're going to hold the Wii remote on its side. You could actually have one and two as either jump or shoot or whatever, and then you can use the D-pad to move around. And you could have basically just assign those buttons to certain keys on the keyboard that correspond to make the person or the sprite do the object that you wish. And that's really all there is to very basic scripting in GlovePy. Now, in the next tutorial, I'm going to show you something a bit more interesting. It's it's basically a quick and less of a program. You don't need to know as much about programming to actually get GlovePy to basically create the script for you using the GUI, the graphical user interface. So that's what we're going to look at in the next tutorial.